The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is... Holly! Hello! Yay, she's finally back! She her computer. She so, no longer has computer issues! <laughs> <laughs> well, now my only issue is getting all of my stuff out, off of my old computer. Well, yeah. But that that's that's just one of those... It, it's I've found it to be more tedious than anything, because... Yeah, uh, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. Makes me kind of glad that a lot of my stuff is on externals, because <laughs> it's just you know just whoop, plug it into a new one. Uh, although with the bigger hard drive inside the desktop computer here, <laughs> uh, when the day comes that I have to transfer all of that, that's gonna be fun. Ugh. Oh lordy! So it's been a couple of months. I mean, between your computer problems and then the holidays came, <laughs> and and then and I and I know you're not gonna be here next week because you're gonna be in a, at a Magfest. Yes, I'll be at Magfest. And it'll be like, ah, I so wanted to try and go, but it's like money kept saying, no, you're not going. Yeah. No. But, you know, that that happens. That does happen. Mm-hmm. Oh. But, you know, for everybody who's there and you see her, she's not that hard to miss, trust me. Go up and tell her hello. Give her a hug. <laughs> <laughs> trust, trust me, she, she gives very good hugs. Yes, I, I, I will hug you. Just, you know, do everybody a favor. Bathe regularly, deodorant. Yes, please. <laughs> Those are the things I ask of you. Yes, and it's a good thing I do it. <laughs> Just oh. and wash your hands. Yes. Magfest is a germy, germy place. Yes, although, oh hell, even me, I, I, you know, I wore the fingerless gloves like most of the time, and I still washed my hands. Mm-hmm. So, or at least put hand sanitizer on them. Yeah. You know, one of those two. You know, cause... yeah. There's a CVS right down the street. Just pick up some hand sanitizer because. Don't depend on the hand sanitizer in the hotel. That will run out quickly. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, although I have I did notice uh, when I was – last time I was there, uh, I had to run to the CVS to pick up um, certain items. <clears throat> and <laughs> it was $7 for a box of three. And, huh. and I was like, really? Really? Okay. At least, at least that's what I'm remembering. I could be off. It just seemed more expensive than other places. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to find out if they, you know, raise their prices when big conventions like MAGFest are around. Yeah, which they really shouldn't. Fucking, yeah. But, <laughs> hey. Oh, so, so uh, since since you since the last time you've been on the show, Holly, we've actually uh, introduced, it's started to become more of a regular thing. I actually take... Uh, Questions and stuff from the Tumblr inboxes. Started off with my personal one, then I said, you know what? Go to the Thespian Talk one because Thespian Talk does have its own Tumblr page. And once that started, I forgot to actually turn on the ass box on the Thespian Talk, but the, <laughs> but thankfully, an astute listener just sent it to the main RT Gomer Prod thing, and I still managed to do that. To do that. Now this week, I have it actually open. Got the anonymous thing all set up on there. If you want to be anonymous, and that's fine. But we do have two this week. Um, so the first one actually comes from an anonymous, and they ask, "Would you fuck your dad to save your mom?" Somebody's... No. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> somebody's been watching South Park recently. <laughs> In fact, my mom would be like, "No, that's cool." Yeah. <laughs> I, I think my mom would be the same way. She'd be like, "Ah, no, no, no." no. I couldn't do it. Just no. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the, yeah, just uh. And then another one. This one's a light, a lighter question in comparison from Avery Monster. Hey, Avery, how you doing? Uh. I mean, to be fair, she also wouldn't have sex with him to save herself. So. <laughs> oh! Oh! Just, just saying. Oh, damn. Oh. But for all of you not in the know, my parents are divorced and have been divorced for like 12 years or something like that. Yeah. Oh, dear. So, so okay. So this the second question, as I said, comes from Avery Monster. And he asks, okay, so I decided to ask a lighthearted question in light of your rather dark first one. Um, 
I'm assuming he's meaning other ones from other shows. Cause <laughs> I, I assume so, but that yeah, was still pretty these, dark. <laughs> yeah, these these are not these are not published until after the episodes are posted. By the way, you know, then they get posted with the episode link. So um, his question is this: Would you rather have Bert the Man Reynolds' mustache, Angelina Jolie's lips, Lord's awesome sauce curly hair, or Ben's eyes facial hair? Personally, um. Out of all of those, I'd probably take the curly hair because uh, my beard already outdoes Ben's eyes and uh, Bert's. So, you know, beard with mustache, yeah. I probably would too just because I already know what I look like with curly hair. Um, <laughs> I, I do have naturally curly hair. It's just not as curly as uh, Lord's is. Um, yeah. It was it was that curly when I was young, um, but it kind of pulled out um, because I had – waist length hair until I was like 17. Right. So, um, otherwise I just, I would worry that Angelina Jolie's lips would overwhelm my face. <laughs> oh God. I'm, I'm trying to picture it now. Uh, I feel like I have too small of a face for lips that big. I can, I can see that. I, I can honestly see that. It, w- it would be an, it would be interest. It would be interesting to see for like five minutes. <laughs> and then after five minutes, I'll be like, yeah, that's too freaky. We got to reverse that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Uh, so those are the two questions we got this week. Again, they'll be posted, you know, on the actual thing with the link to the show if you've missed it. So if you're one of those that didn't already hear the show, and if you're already hearing it, you've seen it there or whatever, point is they'll be there. So if others want to get in on it, just go to thespiantalk.tumblr.com, hit the ask box, just drop in any question you want. We will likely answer it. Um, I I think there's probably very little that I won't out that I'll outright not answer on the show. Mm-hmm. It's just it's it's prob it's it's just one of those things that it's going to be uh, um, really tough to do. Um, of course, anything that causes a paradox will will outright not be answered, and you and you'll <laughs> know you'll know because I will I will actually point out the first one I get. Yeah, uh, or maybe others if I can get a humorous response out of it. Uh, so with that, uh, something we haven't had in the past few weeks, actually, because I've been forgetting to. Uh, Shoutouts. Uh, Holly, uh, uh, do you have any for this week? I do. Ooh. Let me. And she's got to pull it up. <laughs> yep, pull up Chrome. Well, I, I have the links open. Ah, um, okay. oh, I th- now I sort of feel bad. They're both Kickstarter-type things. Oh, that's okay. One of them is um, my friend Jonathan Reedgelt. He is... Um, producing his fourth album. Wow, I can't believe it's his fourth. Um, and this time he wants it to be just what he wants it to be. So, you know, he doesn't want to go into it with a whole bunch of other people telling him what to do, and so that's why he's doing this um, Kickstarter. And it's the Kickstarter is whatever I want it to be. <laughs> that, that's what it's called. Well, it gets um, people to click on it because I saw you. I saw you had. Uh, I think you tossed money at it or, or had otherwise shared it. Yeah. And, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute, what? <laughs> so I clicked on. I'm like, oh, it's a music album. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and and he does a lot of um, Broadway type music, and so a lot of people have heard it, his stuff because like uh, Natalie Weiss on YouTube has done some of his stuff. I mean, a bunch of other famous people. Yeah. But that's how I first heard of him. Sweet. So there's that, and I will give make sure you guys have the link yes. for that. And then the other one is um, Rap Critic's Trip to Italy. Yes. I, I, I had actually first heard of this when I was listening. I think it was the latest Lord Cat Live. They, they touched on it, but they didn't say why he was going to Italy. He has gotten a part um, at the Oberlin in Italy as um, Figaro. Sweet. In The Marriage of Figaro. <laughs> so, um, it's a it's a summer program. For those of you who don't know, um, Rap Critic is a classically trained opera singer. Mm-hmm. Oh man! I... And and so it's a big deal for him to want to go, but it costs five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, and the first bit of money is due in a few days here. So I'm actually gonna uh, donate money for him yeah. for this in a bit. Um, but yeah, yeah this I... is his, his GoFundMe and this is being shared all over the place. And again, I'll make sure you guys have the link for this, but yeah, yeah. 
He's he's really good, <laughs> and this is a really big deal. So yes, and he's I like, if I don't make the money, then I don't make the money. You know that'll suck, but yeah. And oh god, if he makes it over there and he's actually in it, I oh god, I'm already jealous because it's like holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah. So, anyways, as for mine, I I had, had one. I thought I had it in memory. I didn't. I had to actually relook it up. Thankfully, Holly had two ready to go. Um, but uh, this one is uh, from uh, Zach Lawrence, who does the Indie Christian Reviews. He's actually starting a new video series called uh, Couch Time Vlogs, and he's starting out with Ultraman. And he and his wife are going to sit there. They're going to do, like, you know, like like the uh, series vlogs that Doug Walker has done mm-hmm. or whatever. He's doing his own take on them, he and his wife. And, as I said, they're starting on Ultraman. And first episode is up on my site, rtgomer.com. In fact, as I'm looking at it, it is the uh, top post. It's the newest one on there. Let's go check it out uh, if you got the time. I, I, I really, really, really recommend it because Zach, Zach's a great guy. He does some really good stuff, and, and you know, it's, it's great to see him doing different things. You know, expanding. That, that is the good thing. Expansion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that is it for my shout-out for this week, and for shout outs in general for this week oh lordy so we get to hit the news and oh boy <laughs> this, this is going to be fun especially this first one comes right out of Wyoming lovely and and before we get into this I do want to reiterate Wyoming's uh, state is, is it's supposed to be the, the equality state is what it, I, I think it's nickname is supposed to be really? I have to google that yeah <laughs> uh, it, it I believe that is what it is, the equality state. But um, but at any yeah, rate, yeah. See, <laughs> trust me, I've lived there. <laughs> that's that's actually also it, 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 so. The state motto is equal rights. Mm-hmm. Yes, and we are saying this because. But I mean, the, I understand that. Like, don't don't misunderstand me when I say this. That's a terrible motto. And I don't mean like that. That's a terrible thing to believe in. I mean that's just really poorly worded. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it is. It is. But you know, hey, you get it's the spirit of the thing. I think that counts. Right. At least in this case. So, so uh, let's see. Let's see what equal rights are going to try and push for now. Uh, conservatives in Wyoming are poised to pass a bill that would allow Christians to treat anybody they hate like shit, all while hiding behind their Bibles. What? Yep. Gotta love that. Yeah. Quality. Yeah. Republican State Representative Nathan Winters, who is also a conservative, quote-unquote, Christian, I love how they put Christian in quotes here, <laughs> uh, pastor, wrote House Bill 83. The bill would allow Christians in Wyoming to use religious liberty as an excuse to discriminate against the LGBT community and is so broad that it could also serve as a shield for racism and sexism. According to Winters, it makes people free from oppression of government if they choose to exercise freedom of conscience. Well, you know, let's let's take this to a logical place here, okay? Freedom of consequent freedom of conscience without the oppression of the government. Okay. So, let's say it is in my conscience to go out onto the street and just knife the next person I see in the chest. Doesn't matter who it is or what they've done. Just, you know, my religious belief says I need to sacrifice somebody, so I go out and knife them in the chest, put them on an altar to whatever god I happen to choose. You know, but, you know, the government shouldn't be able to arrest me because I'm practicing a religion. Except I just murdered some fucker. Since you see where that can go. And, and I know that's a slippery slope place to go. But that, that's where this could lead. Yeah. You know, the bill states, Burden means any action that directly or indirectly constrains, inhibits, curtails, or denies the exercise of religion or moral conscience by any individual contrary to an individual's exercise of religion. Furthermore, the bill even says that a sincerely held religious belief doesn't have to be compelled by or central to a system of religious belief. Um, wow. So, so the example that you gave isn't really such a slippery slope after all. I guess not. <laughs> I don't see people going to, quite towards that extreme, <laughs> but that's that's an extreme people could go to, and I hope I didn't give anybody any ideas. And if I did, feel free to come and, and kick my ass. Oh. And, but they also give an example. 
an example being uh, restaurant owners could refuse to serve gay people, African Americans, or non-Christians, and they can get away with it by simply claiming that their religious liberty gives them the right to do so. A doctor could re refuse to perform an abortion procedure to save a woman's life. A pharmacist could refuse to sell contraception to women. Employers could fire and refuse to hire gay people. Simply put, public and private citizens can basically discriminate against gay people and anyone else they consider inferior at will. And they can do this by just playing the religious liberty card. Well, you know what? We can, all, we can play this on the other foot, by the way. I hope he's realizing this, because let's say this thing does pass, and you get, say, you know, a non-Christian business in the middle of a city somewhere, and they say, nope, we are not going to serve the Christians. I, I don't know why I went with that particular one, but let's run, let's roll with it. <laughs> you know, they say, no, no, fuck you, Christians, we're not, we're not going to serve you. How much of an outrage is that going to cause? Because yeah. guys like this, he doesn't want freedom of religion for all religions. He just wants it for Christianity. Fuck everybody else. That's what he's really wanting to say. But of course, he can't say it, even though this bill is still blatantly, you know, hitting up against the wall of separation of church and state and trying to break it down. Uh, and the, the article does state the broadness of the bill is totally transparent, too. This act shall be liberally construed in favor of the broad interpretation of the exercise of religious and moral conscience to the maximum extent permitted by this act. <sighs> oh, lordy, 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 lordy. I, I feel like uh, Wyoming doesn't really understand equality. <laughs> Yeah, or, or at least not, it's, it's what is that? Senator, governor, uh, representative. I, I don't think Representative Winters does. That's for sure. Uh, and you know, Wyoming it is, it is full of a bunch of conservative people. I've been there. I've met a bunch of them. A lot of them are more conservative. But you know what? For the most part, citizens in Wyoming, they are the nicest <coughs> people you could ever meet. It's it's like they're it's a state full of total sweethearts, and they elected a fucker like this. Oh, of course, they also produced Dick Cheney. So I, I just wonder, what the hell went wrong? Hmm. But I, I'm I'm hoping that I'm right and that it will not pass. I, I don't yeah. think it will pass. It better not. If it does, then I'm going to be hearing from my from my friends out there be like, what the fuck? Uh, oh, God. Yeah, that's, that's pretty messed up. It, it's like, it... oh, what's his name again? Anyway, that that guy doesn't understand the whole concept of your rights and where somebody else's rights begin. Yeah. Yeah, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you get to treat somebody like me or somebody like Holly or somebody like anybody else that is not a white Christian male or a white Christian cissexual heterosexual male any differently just because of who they are. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So, so speaking of, of religious bug nuttery and, and insanity, let's go to Memphis. At least one Mid-South parent is concerned about what she says is a satanic symbol on a school bus. <laughs> I loved this story. <laughs> it's so fucking ridiculous. It is. Robin Wilkins snapped a photo when she noticed the shape of an upside-down five-pointed star outlined in the brake lights of a school bus that was stopped in Cordova. Anyone who fears a god, if not God and Jesus Christ, should be outraged, Wilkins said. She says Christians should be outraged that a symbol that looks like a pentagram would be allowed in the design of a vehicle used to transport children to public schools. Except, um, except not really, because uh, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a thing. The lights, you know, I... I I want to say, like, what, the LED lights now, or, or whatever, they have, like, a bunch of the little bulbs in them? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're LED lights. Yeah, and just a bunch of the lights in there just kind of just burned out for a bit, for whatever reason, burned out, went out, what have you, and they just happened to form in the shape of, of an upside-down five-point star. That That's all it is. Well, I've, I've seen, actually, multiple pictures of this, so it, it might actually just be a thing that is happening with lights on school buses, but in any case, um, why does she think that all stars are specifically satanic? Well, because it's upside down and inside a circle. But that doesn't, that still doesn't make any sense. Like, not all of them are upside down. Yeah. But this particular one, 
it is upside down, so it must be satanic. Oh this my lady's god. lady's insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she might be a product from the satanic panic back in the 90s. <laughs> oh. On social media, parents are arguing both sides of the debate. Some say the brake lights are a subliminal, subliminal pagan message, while others say it's just an unintentional design. If you can't put a cross on there, you can't put a pentagram on it, Wilkins said. Last month, Walgreens pulled wrapping paper from its shelves because the images on paper appeared to be swastikas. <laughs> Even though no, I, I've seen that one, yeah. and that one was like a genuine mistake. Nobody intended for that to happen. Yeah, it's like because at first I didn't even see it. I was like, "What the hell are they?" Oh, it was like not till I saw the area circled, and I was like, "Okay, I get that." Yeah, I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> oh god, I, I, you know they they might have problems with level with level three in the Legend of Zelda then. <clears throat> Although that's more of a manji and not not an actual swastika because manji is reversed. Ah, uh, ah, uh, but uh, but you know some people would have a problem with it anyway because they don't know the difference and they don't care to. Uh, even those who are not completely sold on the bright light being a sign from the devil have questions. Why'd they put it up there? Marsha Hudson asked. Why'd they put it upside down? I don't think it was intentional. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, local news talked to Joe Applewhite, who is a practicing Wiccan, and she says, technically the lights do form a pentagram, but she says the symbol itself is not a satanic or evil one. Yep. Yeah. Find out what it really means before you start getting riled up and riled up and worked up about something. Applewhite said, "Wiccans, we believe in God. We believe in Jesus, but we don't call him God. Either way, Wilkins says the lights send the wrong signal, and she wants them replaced with solid red brake lights. Neither Durham School Services nor the school district would answer any questions about the bus's brake lights because you guys, you know, you you know, what what is your what is what is her name? Robin Wilkins, Miss Wilkins, you are making a big deal out of nothing. Yeah. It's a design." And, and you're trying to say, oh, it's all satanic and everything. And even pagans are like, no, that's kind of one of our sy sy symbols. That's not a satanic thing. Yeah, and it, and it isn't even what you think it is. Yeah, it's just, yeah, this, this is not going to work. No, no, it's just, just cool your tits, all right? I'll, I'll get some ice and some water. We'll put them on there, you know, cool them off for a bit. Go sit, go sit down and and realize that other religions are out there. And just because you hear it from your pastor that this religion is evil doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Yeah. You know. Oh, Lordy. And that actually reminds me of, like, like years ago. There was a building in Alabama that was built in such a way to where when you viewed it from, like, the plane or whatever, you would look down, and it would be in the shape of a swastika. <laughs> And nobody knew about it until until somebody just like flew over and was like, "Holy shit, that's a swastika!" Uh, ra rabble, rabble, rabble. Uh, but I brought up Alabama because that's where we're going next, in Valley, Alabama. Even you've likely heard of students bringing canned food to school for food drives, but you ha have you ever heard of bringing a canned food item f to school for safety? I have not. Have you? No, I have not. Yeah. A letter sent to parents of students at, the, at one school in Chambers County requested just that. Students were asked to arm themselves with an 8-ounce canned food item. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? 8-ounce uh, can you know, it's just like a can of corn. Why not? Oh, though it sounds odd, the administrators believe the practice could catch potential intruders off guard, possibly even knocking him or her out until police arrive. Right, because he's going to be threatened by eight-year-olds with canned goods. Really? I mean, okay, off guard, I'm sure, okay, sure, you, they might catch you off guard for a moment. But it's only for a moment. It's not going to be that long before he his brain slips into that whole fight, fight or flight and either gets the fuck away or he shoots everybody in the place. Right. I was like, this is Alabama. Like, the guy who's going to break into school is not going to have a gun? Of course he is. <laughs> because it's like, Alabama. Mm. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, my God. And... They, they sent a letter, and a letter to parents, W.F. Burns Middle School Principal Pol Priscilla Holly said, As a result of school shootings throughout the United States and discussing with law enforcement on the best procedure to follow to keep up our students safe, we are enhancing our procedure for intruders. And they, there is a picture of the letter that is on the thing that, if you're watching the YouTube version, it should be up right there. Uh, I, I apologize for it being a little hard to read, um, but there it is. If you wanted to 
try, I guess. Um, what did I put? What did I leave off? Yes, the idea to arm students with something like a can or a book comes from Alice training. The Alice acronym stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, Evacuate. I can honestly say that the major point of the training is to be able to get the kids ac ac evacuated, rather, and not be sitting ducks hiding under desks. Superintendent of Chambers County Schools, Dr. Kelly Hodge said. Hodge said the school systems in 30 states teach the principles of Alice to students. Auburn University also teaches Alice on its campus. Alice program falls in line with new guidelines for school safety issued by the Department of Education in 2013. Understandably, this is a sensitive topic. There is no single answer for what to do, but a survival mindset can increase the odds of surviving, the Department of Education said. There are three basic op options, run, hide, or fight. You can run away from the shooter, seek a secure place where you can hide and or deny the shooter access, or incapacitate the shooter to survive and protect others from harm. I just want to also point out that there was a bunch of gun nuts over in Texas. I don't. I may or may not have put this uh, in a little later. Um, no, I didn't. So, so I can actually say this now. There was a bunch of gun nuts over in Texas that tried to um, reenact the Charlie, you know, the the Charlie Hepto shooting that happened a few weeks ago. Right. And, and in, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah, and in, in, in with those. Uh, the victims in question would have, would have, were also armed. You know, the play victims in question were armed. Mm -hmm. So it was like, here's what could have happened if they had been armed. So they went in, and the armed victims still became dead victims. So not much change. In fact, I think the I think the the, the uh, it, it it didn't work out like they wanted to. Is where I'm getting at here, because uh, I, I don't think one of the play assailants were killed, or, or may have been hurt, may have been hit. I don't know. But um, it, it didn't make much of a difference. In fact, it may have made things worse. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so um, so incapacitate the shooter to survive uh, is probably not going to be the best because the shooter they probably have a little bit better of an idea what they're doing as opposed to an eight-year-old just throwing a can blindly. Right. Like I guess that's really the part of this that like drives me nuts. Like. Let's put our children in more danger. Yeah, just no, no. I mean, I mean, I like the idea of Alice to begin with. You know, okay, you know, alert, lockdown, inform, counter, evacuate. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, everybody get everybody alert. You know, make sure shooter can't get to them or or whoever, whatever whoever the intruder is can't get to them, and when they can, get the children out. That's fine. Right. Well, the, anyone who's countering should be a freaking adult. Yes. You know, we don't we don't send our children to school to have them fight crazy people. No, we send them to school to teach them reading, writing, and arithmetic, and we and maybe play a game of tetherball or something. We don't teach them to throw cans at adults' heads because you know the shooters are going to be adults for the most part. And I say shooters because that's usually the kind of intruder that comes into these places. It's usually an adult, maybe an older teenager, but most most of the time it's going to be somebody older and more powerful and probably faster. Oh God! So, uh, well, if we're going to go over to the Upper West Side, Manhattan, Manhattan, New York. The mother of the teenage unlicensed driver who fatally struck a little girl on the Upper West Side exploded in court Wednesday, screaming, There is not justice! as the judge offered her son three to nine years in prison instead of youthful offender status. It's not fair! There's not justice in this country! shrieked Franklin Wright Reyes' mother, Li Li Lilia? Lilia? as officers dragged her from the courtroom. He was only 17! Jeebus, he's only going in for up to nine years. It's not like they're putting him to yeah, death. Yeah, and he killed somebody. Yeah. And, and, by the way, Franklin Reyes fatally struck four-year-old Ariel Russo with his parents' SUV in 2013 and has been arrested three times since then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this, this isn't a single mistake. Yeah. If it was a single and mistake, he, and he, be one thing. he killed a child. I, I I would I would call that justice. I would too. It's, he, just, it's not like he's being executed for it. No, he's just gonna go away for almost a decade at at most. 
you know, he'll he'll be 27 by the time he gets out at the latest. For um, a crime that he actually committed. Yes. And not to mention, okay, let's see. He was fleeing a routine traffic traffic stop when he fatally struck uh, Ariel, the little girl, and seriously injured her grandmother. He didn't have a license and had taken his father's car on a joyride, the authority said. He was rearrested in July while out on bail for the manslaughter rap for allegedly looting a dead woman's apartment in a Chelsea building where his father was superintendent. The dad, too, was charged in the theft. And he was busted again while still out on bail on August 31st for allegedly driving without a license after cops stopped him for an illegal turn. Reyes stepped on the gas, dragging an officer 100 feet, according to the complaint. Wow! And a week later, he bolted from the DA investigator escorts as they left a hospital where he had treatment for an injured leg. So basically, this kid got off lucky. Yeah. And the mom's bitching about how unfair this is. Um, you know, maybe you should have raised your kid to not be such a gigantic piece of shit. Exactly. Just, dude. And for anybody who's like, well, what about the father? Um, well, the father isn't the one bitching about the fact that his kid's going to jail. I mean, unless we get to that later on in this story. Yeah. Um, yeah, which, but... Which he, it, we, don't, we don't... We don't hear what the father says, unfortunately, in this story. The only mention of the father is that he was also uh, charged with the theft of the uh, dead woman's apartment. Yeah. So that's the but only in any thing. case, <laughs> it, that still doesn't matter to me because the mom had to know that the dad was a piece of shit. Yeah. And and, and it's like, lady, you know, like 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 Holly said, you you raised a piece of shit son. Um, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know if if it was, if it was your upbringing or or if it was just society and and everything else. I don't know what it was, but apparently you failed somewhere, and your son's a piece of shit and needs to pay for his crimes. That, that, that's just all there is to it. Yeah. You know. Uh, I, I, it sucks, lady, but this is your son's chance to turn his life around. Oh yeah. You know, people. And this is one of those things that just drives me crazy. People are like, oh, but prison is a punishment. Yes and no. I mean, the point of prison is still to re rehabilitate people. Yeah, definitely. And it definitely works for a lot of people, just because it doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be things that are going to work better for some people than don't, you know? I mean... You know, prison works well for some people. They go in, they serve their time, they come out. Okay, we're not going to do that again because, holy shit, what the hell did I miss the five years I was in prison, for one thing. You know, some people, prison won't work because, eh, whatever, you know, it, it just drives them deeper and deeper into the dark parts of their mind. And they get out and they have to go back in and out and in and out and in and out mm -hmm. and in, and their life is horrible. And they end up doing other things. You know, people like that, maybe just a good slap across the face will set them straight and be like, Psh! hey, asshole, don't do that again, you know? Of course, if they kill somebody and, and they're in that state, then uh, I have no idea. Um, I, I don't know, stab them in the shoulder or something, I don't know. Uh, I, I honestly don't know. But um, now we come to the portion of our show where we talk about riots and the inequalities of, of people dealing with them thereof. Uh, so, you know, at this point, everybody, we all know, and we remember Ferguson and and yep. the and the protests and, and, and I, maybe a riot here or there thereof. You know, definitely a lot of protesting. You know, a lot, a lot of... A lot of people just out and about, not even not even being harmful, just out protesting, mm -hmm. you know. And then we have this. Ohio State football fans took to the streets after their team's championship victory early Tuesday, yelling and screaming in delight, setting nearly 90 fires and tearing down an Ohio Stadium goalpost. Like, okay, everybody's thinking this, so I'm just going to say it. Yes. White people. In fact, you, <laughs> I... If, if you weren't going to say it, I was. <laughs> Fucking white people. Police made a handful of arrests after using tear gas and pepper spray to disperse crowds of Ohio State University students and other fans following the Buckeyes' win. Officers on foot, on horses, they still use horses? And in cruisers... Well, places still use horses. Yeah. And, and in cruisers patrolled the main drag throughout through campus after midnight when revelers spilled out of nearby bars to celebrate the football team's 42-20 to 20 win over the University of Oregon in Dallas. Thousands of fans chanting, Let us in! converged on the Ohio State football stadium where police used tear gas to turn them away. Yeah, it's after midnight, they're closed, they're not going to let you in just because you want to have an orgy there. 
Most headed back to the bar area where, cu where cruisers lined the street and officers limited pedestrian and vehic vehicular traffic. Fans tore down a temporary goalpost used for high school games on the south end of the Ohio Stadium field, university spokesman Dan Hedman said. University police responded to various places in and around campus, including Ohio Stadium, University's Mirror Lake, a popular student gathering spot, and the neighborhood north of campus. Courtney Olesh, a 19-year-old economics and finance major from Kent, witnessed the early morning scenes on campus. There was like a fog because there was so much tear gas being used, she said. The 89 fires, I thought, it was, oh, oh, nearly 90, okay. I was about to say, wait, they said 90. No, they said nearly 90. Mm. <laughs> The 89 fires reported to the Columbus Fire Department involved trash bins, dumpsters, and couches. Couches? <laughs> Why would you say well, that? I, it's, a, it's a college town. I, I feel like that's pretty common. I, I, I well, okay, well, I live in a, I would say, well, I live in a college town, we don't say that, but then again, my college here is a Baptist college. But, right. <laughs> but, um, but, but I live near another college town, which is more of a, which is a secular college, and... I've never seen anybody set a couch on fire. No, I'm I'm pretty sure that happened when I was in college. <laughs> yeah, or maybe it's because it's a larger city. I don't know, oh, or or what have you. But just a couch on fire that 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 just that's just weird to me. Fire department said it responded to three reports of people with injuries in the campus area. Some police officers used pepper spray to clear an estimated 5,000 revelers from the streets, while canisters of tear gas were also deployed. Crowds began going home within about two hours. Columbus Police Chief Kim Jacobs said officers tried to use as little force as possible to control those celebrating. Let me repeat that. They tried to use as little force as possible to control those celebrating. That is important because, let's see, as I mentioned, Ferguson demonstrators, they're just protesting. The most they're doing is yelling and keeping you up at night. That's the most they're probably doing. And they respond not only with tear gas, they respond with, like, fucking rubber bullets... You know, people are going to the hospital because they're being shot, not with pepper spray, not with tear gas, but with fucking rubber bullets. And yet these guys, they just get the tear gas. And and, uh, and it's just, uh, uh. She said, repeated requests for people to clear the streets were ignored and fire trucks can't get through to the ca to, through the crowds to respond to the fires. She said the energy of the level, energy level of the crowd increased as the number of people grew. Well, that happens. It was getting amped up, Jacob said. What we know is that when crowds start to behave that way, bad things can happen. Yeah, and they can if they start to behave that way. Or you could have a, have a large crowd of people that you think are beneath you and your entire police force agrees the same way, and they just start firing because they're afraid of a group of black people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you... I, I think it's pretty obvious how I how I am viewing this. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. It's like because, like like you said, like we both we're, we're, we're like we both are obviously seeing. It's most likely a bunch of white people, and I've and I think I've seen like other people. I want to say other media outlets treat this as like, oh, they're just kids. Boys will be boys. Kids will be kids. Oh, you college teenagers. <laughs> but this isn't just college kids. Like, yeah. that's, I mean, this happens with all sorts of major sporting events. Yeah. And it's like, it's football. Okay. Okay. Your team won. Great. I'm happy for you. Buckeyes win. Great. Go Buckeyes. All right. Fine. No need to have a riot over this. I mean, yeah, you celebrate, you go out, you have an orgy, fine, you know. Orgies are harmless. As long as everybody as long as everybody consents to it and everybody's fine with it, it's fine, it's harmless. You know, you know burning down half a city block is not a good thing. When I was in college, I was in the marching band, and we were at the rival school for the yearly game. Yeah. And they won the game, and they tore down their own goalposts. <laughs> And it was like, that? what? So, so you guys won, and you're destroying your own things. It's like, what the fuck is wrong All with right. you people? Oh, uh, goddamn. And, and, and they, this article does note, there were no problems reported in Oregon. Which means, the people in Oregon are better losers than you guys are winners. <laughs> yep. I mean, just, and this is football. I just don't understand that mentality. Like, something really awesome happened, so let's destroy shit. Just no. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you know, to, to that end, like people rioting when bad things happen makes way more sense to me. Yeah. Like, th- then I get it. You're angry. You're upset. You, you know, you want other people to feel the same pain that you do. Yeah. I get it. You know, even if I think it, it, it may be ill-advised. But this? No, this makes no sense to me. No. We won! Yeah! Destroy all our stuff! <laughs> it's like, no! You could use... You're gonna need that stuff later! Don't do it! You're gonna need it! You know, like the couches being burned! Don't burn your couches! You're gonna need them later because you're gonna need a place to sleep after after your landlord kicks you out! <laughs> uh, no. I, I mean, the couches thing, I think, is because couches are so... They so often change hands in college towns. I mean, I moved into an apartment my senior year, and somebody was moving out, and they put out a couch, and we were like, ooh, a couch, and they were like, you want it? It's yours. <laughs> nice. Oh, Lordy. Just, it's just, and, 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 and of course, the writing, because they win is stupid anyways, we, we, we reiterate that again. But, you know, the fact that this is a bunch of white people doing this, and this is how the media reports it. But yet, a bunch of black demonstrators demonstrating against something that is that is very relevant and very serious. They get treated like like lower class citizens. They get treated like criminals. Like oh my god, spooky boogity boogity boogity. You know, they don't get the same kind of treatment that these guys do. In fact, yeah. the treatment should be reverse. If anything, okay, don't okay. Honestly, don't bring out the rubber bullets against anybody unless everybody is like going to actively destroy you know like people you know unless they're just going to hit every cop within a five mile radius of the thing then you might want to break up the rubber rubber bullets to stop a few but you know that should be the only thing peaceful demonstration you get rubber bullets you get treated like shit violent and and property damaging riots because of a football game Oh, they're just having fun. That's what I'm reading out of the whole situation. I don't know about anybody else. Uh, so, so you know, ho- ho- hooray, Buckeyes! You guys, you know, congratulations on the win. But uh, your fans are stupid. Uh, just, yep. just gotta say that. I, I don't like saying that a particular thing or person's fans are stupid. But this is one of those cases where it's like, I can't <laughs> no, deny it. Can't you, deny you, it. You genuinely did something dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you genuinely did. Uh, speaking of something dumb, Lafayette, Colorado. An elementary school principal says she was fired for protecting children from humiliation. Noelle Ronnie says she fought against a policy requiring kids to get their hands stamped if they don't have enough money in their lunch account. She was fired from Peak to Peak Charter School in Lafayette in the fall. The kids are humiliated, they're branded, it's disrespectful, where's the human compassion? And these are little children, she said. Ronnie was principal for nine years before being fired, and she calls it a wrongful termination and she wants her job back. If we have to, we'll file suit, she said. When I see something that I feel harms children, I speak up. Good on her. Yeah. School attorney Barry Arrington said the school won't discuss personnel matters in depth, but he called the allegations absurd. He said in a statement, three outside lawyers agree her claims are baseless. Who are the lawyers? I'm, I'm, I'm honestly kind of curious to see which lawyers are, are bending things so much, you know, are, are seeing things to the point to where the, these claims are baseless. Yeah. Yeah. Ronnie said she had passionate discussions with her bosses before, but she was stunned by their response. I was shocked that their reaction was not outrage, that it was more of, who are you to tell us not to do this, she said. Many parents of students at the school say they are upset by the firing. They think Ronnie was the victim of politics. On Monday, parents met at a church in Erie to discuss the recalling of two schools, two of the school board's members. I feel she was bullied, and we want her back, one parent said. And you know what? The whole stamp on the lunch account thing? Why? I mean, and, and you know what? From from uh, Miss Ronnie's point of view, from, from her side, which I, I am honestly taking here, why? There, there's no reason for it. You know what's yeah. going to happen when, when other kids see that stamp and realize what it means? Kids are cruel fuckers, all right? They will tease each other on the smallest thing. You know, at least until you teach them, hey, you don't fucking do that, you little shit. But until that point, they're cruel little fuckers because they don't understand. And it's yeah, like gonna... ha, 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 you're poor. You don't have any money. You can't afford to eat. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. 
they, they, they don't understand that yet. And, and once they do, then there's, they're going to be the kids that, you know, they're going to try and give them their food. But, oh, wait, if... if, if... <laughs> but, but there was already that case where that kid got in trouble, too. Oh, yeah. And if, and if other school... Feeding his hungry friend. Yeah, because... With a, with oh, a no. lunch that his family paid for. Yeah, but, oh, no, we can't help others because we have to fend for ourselves. Yeah, that's the point we want to get across to children, right? Yeah, we did everything by ourselves when we were younger, and I'm, and I'm sitting here thinking, bullshit. Yeah, no person is a fucking island, all right? If a person wants to help another person, let them help it. And they should not be shamed because they come up a little short in the lunch line. Yeah. Guess what? Kids need that lunch. I'm, I'm personally uh, – I am not a fan of kids – making kids pay for the lunch at school anyway. I know the school needs to have some sort of income to keep the lights on and all mm -hmm. of that. But there are other ways to get it other than making kids pay for it or rather the parents paying through the kids. Or, you know what, maybe, you know, especially with these uh, government – run schools, you know, the public schools and everything, maybe, oh, 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 here's an idea, and I think every Republican is probably going to shit their pants at this idea, raise taxes a little bit, and use those taxes to pay for the school lunches so kids can eat, can eat free. Hmm. Yep, there they go. They, they shit themselves. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't want to raise taxes, and, and more so, at least the ones in power, they don't want to help anybody else that's not going to help them. So it, it's uh. – to, to this day, I, I'm still surprised at the number I've, I've spoken to, number of people I've spoken to whose school didn't, didn't sell a hot lunch. Yeah. I'm like, what? That – I mean, that happens? That is weird. Like, I mean, like, like you, don't, you don't get hot lunch at school? Shit. This, this town right here, Graceville, Florida, it, it, is, it is a small little podunk town. We still had hot lunches. All right, and I'm pretty sure there, there's even smaller towns in the same county as me. I'm pretty sure they got hot lunches too. So if small little podunk redneck towns can have hot lunches, there's no fucking excuse. There, there just isn't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure even if even if the school didn't have the budget for it, I'm pretty sure there are restaurants in the area, you know, like 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 if both of the schools here in this town didn't have the the budget for it i'm pretty sure places like like even our local hardies or local subway you know or some of our other local restaurants would step in and say here let we're going to provide lunch for the kids mm -hmm. you know make sure that they can eat a good hot meal hell there's a restaurant like right of like a block away from the elementary school if the if the elementary school came into that hard hard of a time when it comes to feeding the kids i'm sure that restaurant would be like oh well, we'll just walk some food over to you guys. Come on. Well, I, I was watching um, Restaurant Impossible the other day mm -hmm. where when the recession was really bad, and it, it, this was actually part of why this woman's business was failing because now that the economy has turned around, she was still providing free lunches for schools. Yeah. Which, you know what? I, I, and I, Robert I, Irvine was like, wait a second. Okay, it, these people don't do anything for you. And they can afford to pay for it now, and you're still giving them free lunch. He's like, I understand that you, you know you wanted to help these people out, but they don't need your help anymore. Now they're just taking advantage of you. Yeah, I can see where he says that from a business perspective, but mm -hmm. if she still wants to help them, well, she couldn't. I mean, she couldn't afford it. Yeah, she was losing her house, she was losing her business, she was losing everything because yeah. That, this is how, you know, and that wasn't the only problem her, of her business, but it was a big one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and I can I can understand that because. Uh, uh, but the, I mean, still, the point is, there are lots of businesses that would do that. That would say, "Oh, you, you need help feeding the kids? We'll help you feed the kids." Yeah, just put it out there because guess what? A lot of businesses, especially at the local level, they they want those kids to grow up strong and, and you know. You know, become adults and achieve their dreams because they're run by people just like you and me. Yeah. So and it's like it, you wouldn't put a dunce cap on a kid. So why is it okay to mark their hand with ink that says "You're poor"? Yeah, just it's it's not cool. I am on this principal side, as, as I've already stated. You know, I, and I hope they give her her job back. They and and the board members that are responsible for this, I hope they get booted. Mm -hmm. Just just kick them out. They, they need to go away. I mean, this is this is one of those tough things because it's like 
Well, if they give her her job back, if they're forced to give her her job back, what she's going to face is them looking for every possible reason to fire her for the rest of her career. This is true. This so is it's true. like, you know, there's part of me that's like, yeah, I do hope she gets her job back. And then the other part of me is like, no, I hope she gets her job back. And then she's like, stuff it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go to hell. Yeah. Hopefully... You know, and who knows? Maybe in the. I mean, meantime, I, I really want somebody to stand up for those kids, but the fact of the matter is, they're never going to let that happen. Yeah, because they're more concerned about money and and indoctrination. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> they're more concerned <laughs> well, about. I, those I kids. didn't hear anything. Yeah. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, so our, our last story for this week. It's comparatively speaking, it's lighter hearted. But it is still freaky as fuck, and I, I want to thank Tara from from uh, What the Fuck is Wrong with You for posting this on her Twitter. And at the same time, I also want to say fuck you for. Wait a this second, this to... goes so hand in hand with that first question that we answered today. Uh oh oh yes it does. Oh my god. <laughs> oh that's weird. <laughs> Oh, the episode has a thread all the way through it from the beginning to the end. <laughs> oh my god. Look that's it. strange. I think that's the first time it's ever happened. I think so. (laughs) Oh my god. Anyway. Um, So, so okay. This is, this is, uh, oh, an 18 year old is planning to marry her long lost father and move to New Jersey where she says incest is legal, according to New York Magazine. I will take uh, things I did not know about New Jersey until now for 1,000 (laughs) hours. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, And, and, and Vera. Yeah, from a nerd vice who lived in New Jersey all of her life. She didn't even know this, for the record. Yeah. And, and she was like, whoa, okay. All right, well, I have to say, I mean, for everybody from New Jersey, I don't blame you for not knowing this, because why the hell would you ever think that you need to know this information? Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, it's like it's like most people didn't realize that most bestiality was legal in Florida until a year or two ago. Nobody really not thought about it. So, you know... You're right, because nobody's sitting around wondering, gosh, I wonder if that's legal. I wonder if I can get away with that. Yeah, just not a lot of people think that. Apparently, enough foreigners thought about that about porcupines, though. So, but that's Florida, and that's weird. Uh, the unnamed couple, yeah. <laughs> yeah, The unnamed couple living in the Great Lakes region is making news after the daughter gave an interview to the magazine about the relationship with her father. She talked about reuniting with him, whom she hadn't seen since she was about five, 12 years later, and finding herself instantly attracted to him. Reuniting with long-lost relatives can and does result in genetic sexual attraction, a term coined in the 1980s. The relationship is still widely considered taboo, no shit, Yeah. even more so when the attraction is between a father and a daughter, reports the New York Magazine. The daughter, who suffers from abandonment issues, told the magazine that she lost her virginity to her father just days after reuniting with him. Ah! Oh, no! Ah, no. No. That is not a sentence like, oh, she lost her virginity to her father. No. No. That is not a sentence that is, that is not a pleasant sentence to say. And this has been an entire show of sentences I didn't want to say or have not been pleasant to say. Whether I wanted to say them or not, I guess I can, we can debate that. But they're still not pleasant. But this one, ah. Her, her, like... How is her dad not a well enough adjusted human being to be like, no, just, no, just, no, this is not okay. Just no, dude, no. Uh huh. They reportedly have been dating for two years. Oh no. Plan to marry and move to New Jersey, where she says adult incest is legal. Ah, oh, two years. And they're from the Great Lakes region, so they could be anywhere from Milwaukee to fucking Cleveland. Or or even, like, I, I think Buffalo's around there, too. Oh, lordy. Just, just, that's a wide area. Oh, 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 oh. oh, lordy. According to the magazine, the woman says that she and her father, who, con- who conceived her on prom night when he was 18, planned to have a large family. They say they are not worried about their kids having genetic problems. She added that incest has been around as long as humans have, and everybody just needs to deal with it. Well, here's how I'm going to deal with it, okay? We need to deal with it? Okay, here's how I'm going to deal with it. You are fucking insane! Just... Yep. 
No! There's a reason why humans as a whole find incest to be a taboo thing, and it's more of a genetic reason. It's not a moral moral reason, because you know what? If it wasn't for the genetics and for the inherent squick factor, I wouldn't have as much of a problem with it. But the the but but the genetics thing? No. No. You're going to be you you are planning to produce a lo a number of kids. I hope you're not a part of Quiverful cuz if you are, I'm going to weep. But you are planning to produce a large number of kids from from the union of you and your father. Oh god, I feel dirty saying that. And, and they're going to have they're, they're, they're going to be genetic defects. That's, yeah, that's what they're going to be. You're unleashing them on the world. Yeah, just because incest has been around doesn't mean that it's it's okay. I mean, look at what happened to the royal families in Europe. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there became so many birth defects because of the incestuous relationships in Europe that, like. I, I, I can't even talk. Yeah, and and, and I, I do want to kind of clarify a little bit what, I, what I'm ranting about here when it comes to incest. I probably, you know, squick worthy as it is, I would probably be a little less, I'd probably be a little more lenient if I knew, okay, they're not going to produce any kids or whatever. Still squick worthy, you're still sick, but at least you're not producing kids. <laughs> there was that... Uh... <laughs> Dear Prudence column, where uh, two d twin brothers uh -huh. were incestuous. Yeah, and the thing is, they're twin brothers, and and and, and of course they can't produce kids unless one of them is 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 like uh, um um was it transgender or something, and one is you know one's got a vagina, one's got a penis. Nope, nope. They were identical twin brothers, as far as I know. Okay, so and so double penis. Yeah, and. So, they hadn't had sex in years by the time that they, you know, and had a sexual relationship in years. They just didn't want to be with anyone else but each other. Yeah. And, and I'm like, that's that's weird, but, I mean... Yeah, and that can't produce kids, so, okay. You know. you're, you're, yeah, you're not putting anyone else's life at risk, so... Yeah, you know... I mean, it's it's strange, but it's really not any of my business. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And 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 again to to make sure I have have this point clear, if she hadn't been planning on having kids with him, and 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 unleashing genetically deformed crotch spawn onto the rest of the planet, I probably would not be ranting as much about it. But the fact of the matter is, you're wanting to have kids with him. That that's no, no, no. That that is not responsible sex. All right, just no. It's just ah, uh, no, no. Ugh. So, on that note, <laughs> we have come to the end of the show. We got about like two minutes left. <laughs> oh lordy! So that it's been a hell of a week. Uh, next week is going to be Magfest, and and Holly's going to be there again. If you see her, come say hello. Give her a hug. She yeah. has great hugs. She she is a great hugger. Oh, lordy, 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 lordy. Oh. So uh, if we wanted to find Holly in the meantime, before MAGFest, where could we find her? You can find me all over various forms of social media as GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. Uh, so that's Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, what have you. You can find me <laughs> even on Vine, except for my Vine is, like, all peanut. So <laughs> if, if you like cute dogs. <laughs> Um, you can also find me on Facebook. My fan page is Holly Christine Brown, and you can also find me over at Nerdvice. Yay! Speaking of Nerdvice, that's also a place you can find me. Uh, you can find the rest of my stuff at rtgomer.com, and I also I actually finally have my own Facebook fan page just for me, not not for my site, just for me personally. Um, go and check it out. I, I try and do updates. Uh, whenever I can. There should be a new uh, uh, Gomer Plays Legend of Zelda video dropping, I want to say by Tuesday. Uh, that'll show up on there and on the site and everywhere, so that's something to check out. I, I know one person at least went through and had like a binge watch of the rest of them, so I'm like, yay! Um, 
So uh, again, if you want to find me on the social medias, uh, you know, Twitter, Tumblr, etc., I'll be at Gomer Two One Double X. Um, and again, like I said, both and I know and I know Nerdvice and both in uh, my site and all of, all of my shows, they all have the Tumblers. Nerd, I think it's Nerd Dash Vice on Tumblr, um, RT Gomer Prod on Tumblr, and and let's see, there's Thespian Talk Tumblr and then the other two, which I will I will announce on those shows. Um, everything else about me, Patreon and all that stuff, that's in the uh, Post show bumper that's going to come up after we get out of here. Uh, so if you want all of that, as well as artwork and everything, uh, that'll all be in the post show bumper. So uh, yeah, I admit I was just filling time. So uh, we're about out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I gotta earn that motor mouth trope. Gotta earn it. So uh, again, thank you guys for listening, and until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.